And Kim, since you're based in Sarawak, uh, could you give us an idea of the challenges there specifically? Period does not discriminate, full stop. Um, it affects menstruators in one way or another. I mean, due to the geography of Sarawak, having a total area of 124,000 square kilometres, as compared to the total area of Semenanjong, which is around 130,000 square kilometres, we have a larger population of menstruators that are located, obviously, in rural areas. And uh, as WWS has spoken to members in the rural areas, they've shared their lived experiences in dealing with menstruation there. Over the decades, they've used um, the good morning towels or scrap fabrics pinned to their undergarments. Um, while this may look like a sustainable approach instead of using sanitary pads, uh, the lack of education on menstrual health does jeopardize their physical well-being when they are not able to wash their cloth pads with clean water or the lack of awareness on how often they are supposed to change their reusable pads. So is enough being done to tackle this issue of period poverty? Oh, definitely not enough is being done about period poverty because we do have a lack of data of period poverty in our country. And I say this is because when aid was being distributed during the pandemic, uh, we first saw that there was huge gaps in sanitary products being provided. Most often, sanitary products that were provided were just including face masks, sanitizers, uh, body wash, and some cleaning products. Hence why uh, SWWS decided to uh, create a donation drive to uh, fill in these gaps for distribution. And what about awareness? Do you think there's enough awareness in Malaysia when it comes to this issue? Unfortunately, no, because education and awareness in general is very inconsistent. However, uh, I have been, been feeling very hopeful in seeing many Malaysians willing to learn more about period poverty and the issues surrounding it, whether it's through their own phones, in terms of social media or within their own homes or classrooms. And they have also been willing to unlearn the stigma society has created around menstruation. Right, because that stigma is one of the challenges, right? How does this um, stigma or that taboo that surrounds menstruation link to the issue of period poverty? Um, the common misconception is that menstruation is impure and kotor and the general society's negative attitude towards the subject has caused women to internalise menstruation as very mamalukan or shameful. Our society then embodies cultural taboos and stigmas surrounding uh, menstruation, along with the media's negative portrayal of menstruation, teaches women and young girls that menstruation is shameful and gross. It should be hidden from the public eye. With the prevalence of false and harmful myths about menstruation in society, our society is left with a gap in knowledge on menstruation due to the lack of open discussions and proper menstrual education in school. And this lack of awareness and knowledge on menstrual health and menstrual hygiene management will also negatively impact women's health. Um, when women are shamed for sharing their experiences, the experiences are being invalidated and made invisible.